Welcome back to the latest episode of the Mav Podcast. I'm John here with Bridget. We're here to talk hockey. We're here to celebrate Christmas. And we are here to talk about UNO's most recent series at Western Michigan University in Kalamazoo, Michigan, a place we have visited a couple of times. We haven't had a lot of road tests this season, so we knew this was going to be a big one because the Broncos play very well at Lawson Ice Arena. And what did you think during that first period of the Friday? game, Bridget? Well, to be honest, I was a little worried during the first period of the Friday game. Uh, We did not get off to the best start. In fact, uh, we gave Western Michigan three goals to kick things off, two of them in the first period and then another one in the second period before Taylor Ward uh, started the scoring for us. Um, I was very worried when uh, they, you know, got a bunch of penalties early the penalty shot that led to the second goal, I was uh, a little bit anxious about that. So I got to be honest, John, it was not looking good for the Mavs early on on Friday. Yeah, it was a, it was a little bit disconcerting. You know, the last time we had scored a goal coming into this series was the Friday game against Colorado College. It was a bit of a concern. You're like, are we going to score any goals this weekend at all? I wasn't quite sure what was going to happen. The good news is, is that the team seemed to tighten things up. They seemed to play better in the third period. Obviously, when they had dug themselves that kind of hole during the first period, I had a difficult time knowing if they'd be able to crawl their way out. They didn't. They almost did. Ultimately, they ended up losing four to two. And so it wasn't quite the start we wanted, but at least they didn't get blown out like four to nothing or five to nothing. Yeah, they definitely, you know, pulled close uh, three to two. Uh, The second goal uh, with Shaq Randall uh, pulled close in that third period. But like you said, ultimately weren't able to do it as Western scored an empty net goal to uh, seal their victory on Friday night, four to two. But hey, it was a different story on Saturday. Yeah, it was definitely a different story on Saturday. You know, that game coming into it, you're thinking they got a little bit of momentum and that might be able to propel them in this game. I was expecting if UNO was going to win the game, it was going to be some sort of high scoring game like five to three or six to five or something like that. Ultimately, this was one of those close, tight, low scoring games that I think UNO has really been missing this season so far. There was only one goal scored in the game, and that was in the second period by Chase Primo. UNO held it together, and it was largely based on the performance between the pipes with Isaiah Seville. 41 shots faced. He stopped all 41. He got the shutout in this game. Yeah, the Mavs killed off six penalties on Saturday night. So not only was Seville fending off, you know, those peppering of shots by the the offense, a lot of those were on the penalty kill, um, including a five-minute major that Kevin Conley took um, that was negated at the end of it by a Western Michigan uh, penalty. But there was a good solid three minutes of them just you know, firing at him. So kudos to that guy for being the brick wall that the Mavs needed on Saturday night to to get them that 1-0 victory. Yeah, and you know, when we talk about some of the great goaltenders in UNO hockey history, like a Dan Ellis, who to me over the course of this program has been one of the top goaltenders, he was able to stand on his head for 60 minutes and get the job done. And that's one of the things that we need to see from Isaiah Seville. Over the years, we've had a lot of adequate goaltenders, but we need goaltenders who are going to be able to steal a game for UNO now and then, because sometimes there's not going to be a lot of puck luck in the offensive zone. He's certainly a talented goaltender, and we've seen him make some just ridiculous saves. Great to salvage a split in that series, because you very easily could have seen Western Michigan sweeping. I predicted a sweep in last week's episode. Jason predicted a split. He thought UNO would lose on Friday and win on Saturday. So he got the prediction right. Who was your player of the week? We got to talk about players of the week. Who you, who'd you like? Well, as you pointed out, there were only three goals scored over the entire weekend. So if we're going to pick the ones that put the puck in the net, uh, which is what I'm going to do, I'm going to give you the easy pick for this weekend because I'm a, a good wife. I'm going to pick 
Uh, Taylor Ward, you know, he is such an impressive player for the Mavs. Just, uh, you know, approaching the 100-point mark in his career. Uh, I wrote this down. He has 50 goals and 47 assists in uh, 107 games. And so he's closing in on that, you know, key milestone. But most importantly, he's really clutch. And I think, you know, you talked about the Mavs going, uh, you know, seven periods without scoring, and they needed that spark. And Taylor Ward provided it. He's uh, a top power play goal scorer. But most important, he's just clutch when you need it. And they definitely needed it. So he gets my pick for my player of the weekend against Western Michigan. Well, and we also learned uh, a little bit of trivia from the uh, Western Michigan broadcasting crew that his uncle, Colin Ward, was actually a star player back in the 1990s for Western Michigan. Uh, I guess I'm glad we didn't lose uh, Taylor to the Broncos. He had lots of opportunities, I'm sure, when he was being recruited. So I was really glad he picked us. And uh, I was really interested to hear that little nugget of information about his uncle, given that uh, his family connection to North Dakota, uh, I was surprised that there's another uh, ward that had a connection to the to the conference. Of course, they weren't in the NCHC back then, but just kind of a cool connection. Yeah, neat little piece of trivia. And I, as you mentioned, am taking the easy pick, which is Isaiah Seville, 41 saves in the shutout on Saturday. A great performance. He also played well. The score might not indicate it, but he also played well as the game wore on on Friday. And again, he needed that rebound performance on Saturday. It's really good for him. He's NCHC goaltender of the week for this week. Uh, well deserved. Uh, this was his fourth time this season uh, getting that honor from the conference. So, uh, so a big weekend for Isaiah Seville and a good split for the team. That's a great way to cap NCHC play for the first half. And they're going to have to work hard and tighten things up because they've got uh, they've got a tough slate coming up uh, when January rolls around. But before January rolls around, we've got our shootout segments. And uh, what's our first shootout topic this week, Bridge? Well, we've been giving a lot of kudos out tonight. So let's continue that with a shout out. Congratulations to uh, Old Bowl coach Blaze on his induction into the U.S. Uh, Hockey Hall of Fame. And uh, that happened last Thursday night in Denver. He was actually part of the 2020 induction class, but because of COVID, they postponed that ceremony and inducted the 2020 and 2021 recipients together. And so his 2020 class included uh, Tony Granado, Jerry York, and Jenny Potter. And uh, so we want to congratulate Coach Blaze. He was uh, head coach of the Mavericks from 2009 to 2017, and that's a great accomplishment recognizing all of his time in the junior leagues and college hockey and all the way into the NHL. So congratulations, Coach Blaze. Terrific honor. I really enjoyed the Dean Blaze years. Uh, We got to know Dean and Jackie a little bit. They were always very nice to us. Something that doesn't always happen with the people who run a college hockey fan site for a team. And um, I just think about some of the players that he recruited while he was here. Guys like Andre Suster, um, the Megna brothers, uh, Ryan Walters, Josh Archibald, Brock Montpettit, uh, Dominic Zombo, Austin Ortega, uh, even a guy like a Tony Turgeon, one of those kind of tough guy players. Just so many others uh, that, you know, I could mention too. Uh, some really talented teams, two NCAA tournament appearances during his eight years here and um, one Frozen Four. Uh, it was it was a good eight year run. I know some people had had higher expectations, but all in all, congratulations, Coach Blaze. Uh, that's a great honor. OK, our second shootout topic fits is- with your hat. <laughs> Hat. Your hat, your hat, my hat. Yes. Merch. merch, merch. Our second, our second shootout topic is all about the merch, John. Well, before, before we move forward, I should mention this hat. Our friend Bernie Lambrecht, longtime member of the mathpuck.com message board gave you and I these hats Christmas of 2019. And uh, he didn't buy these hats pre-done. He bought the lumberjack print Santa hat. And then he had the logo, the O patch that he got at the UNO bookstore embroidered on. So this is a custom hat. You have one as well. You're not wearing your hat, but I'm wearing mine. So, so I mean. To be fair, I wear UNO gear like pretty much every day of the year, even in occasions when Mav gear is not required. 
cough, cough, Omaha Press Club. So just because I'm not wearing my Santa hat right now does not mean that I have not already been wearing it this season. So just so you know. But I mean, you could have, it would have been fun for the thumbnail of this for, but I digress. So talk to us about merchandise. So in previous years, I've done uh, some Facebook Lives and some other posts that talk about Christmas gear for your, the math fans in your life and, and for you, frankly. Um, so I wanted to encourage all of you out there in Mav Puck Cast land to uh, shop for your Christmas gifts at some local vendors that offer Mav merchandise. Uh, specifically, we've gotten a lot of our gear at Lawler's uh, Custom Apparel. And also at the UNO bookstore, I'm repping, I'm repping some of my UNO hockey gear right now. And like I said, uh, pretty much six out of seven days of the week, you can find me wearing something Maverick related, either uh, one of my jackets or a, a t-shirt or a hoodie or, you know, this coat. And it's interesting to me because when I'm out and about, about once a week, somebody asked me if I work at UNO. And I got to be honest, I don't know how many Husker fans get asked if they are UNL employees when they're wearing their Husker gear. But there just are not enough of you guys out there wearing your Mav gear. And I get the question all the time if I work for UNO. Now, of course, unofficially, I'm an, an ambassador uh, of that great school. But I would love to see more folks wearing Mav gear out in the community. So I want to encourage you to do a little shopping at uh, Lawler's just on 84th, just north of L or at the UNO bookstore and pick up some gear for yourself and for your friends and family. And let's all be outfitted in Maverick hockey gear this fall and winter. Well, I let me say, first of all, it doesn't surprise me that people would think that you were an employee of UNO because you did teach a class the semester after we graduated. And I do wish more people would wear UNO gear. You know, you don't see it enough in our community. Not only that, you don't see it enough among UNO hockey fans at games. There's a lot of other apparel that is not UNO hockey apparel. And again, I understand that it's not like Husker football apparel where you can find it at all kinds of outlets here in Omaha. But I would really encourage fans to make the effort. I think it it adds a lot to the atmosphere at the games. UNO benefits from the sale of merchandise and uh, certainly a great local store like Lawler's Custom, which has provided us with a lot of great merchandise that we have promoted uh, on mavpuck.com over the years. Pat Lawler, who owns uh, Lawler's Custom Sportswear, is a great guy. And I would encourage you to get out and support a local store. You know, a lot of local merchants like that were hit hard by uh, the pandemic. And uh, it's a great way to support your team, get the UNO fan in your life some gear. We hear all the time that athletics is the front door to the university. And I think the more people that are out there wearing the O, showing the O, is better for the university and it's great for the hockey and other sports programs as well. Yep. So it's it's time to represent and you too could be confused for a UNO employee like Bridget is on a, a near weekly basis. Okay. Our last segment that we've got going today is the St. Lawrence series coming up in Canton, New York. I'm not familiar with Canton. I'm uh, I'm sure it's in upstate New York, but this is one of those great road trips back East that UNO uh, takes every couple of years. St. Lawrence is a team that we've played once before. And this this team features a former Mav who's uh, playing for St. Lawrence. Yeah, so I'm uh, interested to see uh, how the Mavs take on their former teammate, Josh Boyer. Uh, he is part of that infamous between periods video, the gr good old hockey game video. I love seeing him up there on that. Um, and of course, we always wish the, the former players well. Uh, they once wore Omaha on their chest, and so we're, we're happy to, to see them find the right fit for them. I think you had uh, talked about previously that, you know, some of the players like Noah Prokop at Colorado College and certainly Josh Boyer, they weren't making the, the lineup on a regular basis, and so they sought out an opportunity that maybe would be a little bit better fit that would get them some more playing time, and certainly that uh, seems to be the case with Josh Boyer, he made the lineup last weekend uh, in the St. Lawrence victory against uh, Colgate, and he got on the scoring sheet for the first time this season with them. Uh, he scored the second goal in a 4-3 to three win for St. Lawrence, so that was exciting to see. 
And in researching that game, I came across an interesting little bit of trivia since we're doing uh, player trivia today as part of our Mav podcast. Uh, John, did you know that Josh Boyer, uh, who got married last summer, is related by marriage? He is the, uh, I guess it would be like nephew in law of former Alaska Governor Sarah Palin. I did not know that. I'm kind of surprised we didn't learn that, although it's been a lot of craziness because of uh, the pandemic. So uh, I guess that doesn't surprise me, but it is odd that he's related to one of the most high profile Alaskans of recent years. <laughs> it just seems odd that uh, that a, a guy playing for our, our humble UNO hockey team is a uh, is related to the former governor. So, well, you know that they say Omaha is a big, small town. So, you know. (laughs) Yeah. So Alaska is a big, small state, I guess. Apparently. But I was (laughs) interested that they included that little bit of trivia in their news article. So I learned something new from that as well. But we're excited to uh, play the the St. Lawrence. uh, I think they're the Skating Saints. Uh, in a series on December 31st and January 1st. It'll start at 6 p.m. Central Time, 7 o'clock for those games out there, which is kind of interesting. Usually those New Year's Eve games are a little earlier in the afternoon, but I'm always excited to ring in a new year with UNO Hockey. Yeah, and I mean, you look at St. Lawrence and their record isn't that great, but they have played some top competition. Uh, They played Western Michigan They played Colorado College really tough um, out in Colorado Springs. So they're a team that I think has some potential. Certainly, I think the good performance at Western Michigan will help propel the team. I'm going to be a little cautious when I look at this. I'm going to say that we split the series. I'm thinking there might be a little kind of Christmas sort of hangover, lethargy. Sometimes it's hard to get up when you're not playing those big name opponents. So I'm going to say we split this series, but it'll be a nice way to ring in the new year. I agree that it'll be a nice way to ring in the new year, but I'm going to put a little bit more holiday cheer on the Mavs plate. And I'm going to predict that the Mavs sweep that series. Again, coming off of that really close victory against Western on Saturday night, I think that gives them a little bit of momentum, a little bit of confidence. Again, it's not a conference series. And as we saw from that uh, early play uh, this season, the Mavs really do well against their, some of their non-conference foes. St. Lawrence record isn't that stellar this year. So I think that we're going to go in there and we're going to get two victories and that's going to help us get the new year started on the right note. So Mavs, you got to get it done. And you can watch the games on ESPN Plus. And if you're not a subscriber to ESPN Plus already, it's it's a really affordable subscription that you can get for a month. Join us. Uh, subscribe to ESPN Plus. You can follow Bridget's tweets during both of those games on Twitter. And we can uh, ring up the year with uh, UNO Hockey. I just wanted to... Make a quick note, too. Uh, we had been encouraging folks to sign up for flowhockey.tv for that Alaska series. And I wanted to remind any of you who did take us up on that suggestion to go ahead and pause or cancel that subscription before you get charged for the next month. So uh, I don't know how many people took us up on that. But if you did, make sure you log into your Flow Hockey subscription and either pause or cancel it super easy through the app but don't spend the extra 35 bucks because the Mavs are not going to be on it again. So there you go. I think you and I might've been the only two people who subscribed based on what I saw on Twitter. I don't know. (laughs) Possibly. (laughs) Okay. So until next time, go Mavs. Go Mavs.